All right, doing a little bit of maintenance here on a uh, York heat pump. So it looks like last year, a uh, technician replaced the, the contactor, which looks like it's in good shape. Uh, we got a control board here we'll check out. We'll check out the capacitor and we'll clean the coil. All right, let's start with this capacitor here. We're gonna check to make sure it's putting out the proper microfarads. All right, we have one side on our common side of our capacitor and we have one side on our Herm, hermetically sealed side. We're putting out 33.2 on a 35 microfarad capacitor. So this capacitor is in acceptable range. So let's just jump over from the Herm over to the fan. Let's see what we got. All right, 4.9 microfarads. So this capacitor is in good shape. That is in with rain, within range also. This is a 35 slash five capacitor and we're putting out 33 slash four nine. So pretty good shape. All right, well, we will move on to the contactor even though it's new. We'll just inspect that, make sure it's there's no burn marks or anything. All right, contactor is currently pulled in. We're not seeing any signs of burning or anything like that. We'll just take a quick ohm reading on it. All right, 15.2.3 ohms. So that is acceptable. We're gonna inspect our control board here. We've got the four screws taken out of it. Just make sure there's no visible burn marks. Looks good. Inspect the front also. All right, everything looks good with the control board. We'll put that back now. All right, we've now got the top popped and we just wanna look, just, just take a visual inspection of everything. Make sure there's nothing gonna rub out, uh, any signs of oil, anything like that. We're not gonna clean the coil yet because I wanna get a, um, I wanna put my gauges on and see what it's doing first and see what the pressures and temperatures are before I clean the coil because then I will have a sopping wet coil and it won't reflect what the true temperature is. Okay, so I'm seeing something here. Right there. That wire is starting to rub up against that copper pipe there. So we're gonna, we're gonna wanna go ahead and address that before that becomes an issue. Because if you watch a couple of my other videos, you can see that that right there will cause a low voltage short. And then you're blowing fuses and then you're creating a service call. So this is the reason we do preventive maintenance, to get on top of stuff just like this, to prevent the homeowner from their system breaking down. So I'm going it's not too terrible at the moment, so we're gonna wrap this with tape, and we're gonna gonna wrap the pipe with tape, and uh, prevent a low voltage short. That is the high pressure switch wire too. So um, had that kept on going, I would give that maybe another five or six months, and that would have created a low voltage short. All right, let's fix it. All right, so. We taped up the piece of wire here. We put some, some zip ties to clean those wires up some. I did tape this here. Bef I did that before I, I, um, I realized I could zip tie everything. So, all right, we got that cleaned up good. All right, we're gonna put this cover back on for now and we're going to start the unit up and we're gonna check the pressures. All right, now with it running, we're just gonna take some amp draws here. We're going to grab compressor amp draw, 5.8, and we're going to grab the condenser motor amp draw. It's a little more tricky, it seems. That, no, it's right here. Condenser 1.1. So we got 1.1 on the condenser, 5.8 on the compressor. So we're going to go ahead and put that in our app here. We're going to record all that in our in our service app. All right, we got kind of a cold day here, but uh, this is our these are our readings here. We've got about four degrees of subcooling, 13 degrees of superheat. Um, our 
suction line temperature is 47. Uh, these don't look bad for the how cool it is today. Uh, typically, I would just hook up the smart probes on this, but I just got this 550S manifold, and I felt like messing around with it a little bit. So it's I like this, but I don't know if there's some things I got to figure out on it or what because I can't seem to, for one, uh, connect the hydrometers to the 550S and then also once I have the 550S connected to the app the hydrometers won't show up on there either so I'm not sure what I got to do to make that happen but it's been a little frustrating so far but if it can do it I'm sure I'll figure it out all right uh, I think we're probably good out here with the condensing unit um, as far as readings go so I think I'm going to move on to the air handler and we'll check some things there then we'll come back out here and clean the condenser coil. Right, it looks like we got about an 18 degree split uh, 63 return 45 supply so this thing is really kicking ass and it's pretty chilly in the house right now so I'm not going to run the air conditioning much longer. All right we're just down here at the air handler now uh, I'm going to do a visual inspection uh, looks like we have an x13 blower motor we have a heater pack, which we will not be testing today because this is an air conditioning PM. So we're just gonna go look at everything. We're gonna inspect the coil, which looks pretty good. We'll check the back side of it too, because that's where the air enters at. Um, we're just gonna look at a couple things here, get an amp draw of the blower, and then we should be good here. All right, looks like we got 2.2 on the blower. We're doing our best to try to keep the uh, the blower door in front of the blower compartment to get a good a good solid uh, amp draw on it because I'll show you. Uh, it looks like 2.2 right now. We take the blower door off. We got 1.6. All right. Next, we're gonna we're gonna check the cleanliness of this evaporator coil. All right, our pump came on. We'll make sure that pumps out in a timely fashion. Yep, sounds like it did. All right, we'll, uh, we'll empty the rest of this water in there and uh, we'll go to the next step. All right, so recently my company added a static pressure line on our preventive maintenance worksheet. So we'll go ahead and do it. Look, our, our P1 here is going to our supply side and our P2 is going to our return side there so our p2 is looking like it's 0.2 and our uh, p1 is 0.33 so that gives us a complete system static pressure of 0.5 which is pretty good uh, the lower the better really on a residential system so anything anything under seven or eight i find is good um, when you get up towards a, a, a 1.0 static, you really uh, are putting some strain on, on your blower. So uh, 0.5 is perfect. Um, like I said, the lower the better. So we, are, we have a good static pressure here. All right, now that everything else is done, now we'll go ahead and wash the condenser coil. All right, guys, that's just a little bit of how I work through an air conditioning maintenance. Uh, you guys might do them a little bit different, but that's that's the way I like to work through them. Uh, no repairs to offer to the customer. Of course, you could always try to find something, but um, we're not going to we're not going to throw a bunch of repairs at the customer that um, that they really don't need. So. All right, guys. Well, I hope you like this video. If you do, just give it a thumbs up, please. And don't forget to subscribe. All right, guys, I'm off for the next one.